rationalizing some more denominators. The first one we have is the square root of 3x over 5y. First thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to rewrite it as th the square root of 3x or the square root of 5y. Use my quotient rule. I need to come up with a clever version of 1. And the one I'm going to choose is square root of 5y over the square root of 5y. And in square root world, this one works fairly often that the square root of 5y times the square root of 5y goes away. It just becomes 5y. And then in the numerator, I have the square root of 15xy. And since that y is inside the square root, I can't cancel anything out. The problem is done. We're going to look at a cube root one now. So I have the cube root, this middle term right here, the cube root of x over the cube root of 36y. Well, the denominator is not a perfect cube, so I've got to figure out, what do I multiply it to make it a perfect cube? Another strategy to use sometimes is to rewrite it like this. So let's just rewrite it first. The cube root over x times the cube root. I'm going to rewrite 36 as 6 squared because that's where it is. And I'm going to rewrite y as y to the first. Well, in order to make all these things a perfect cubed, I need to have three, or a degree 3 exponent on all those terms. So that's going to help me decide what I'm going to multiply by. I have a 6 squared in here, and I need a 6 to the third, so I'm going to multiply it by a 6 to the first. I have a y to the first, and I need three of them, so I'm going to make it y squared. And then that's going to be my clever version of 1. So let's multiply that. The cube root, so I'm left with the cube root of 6 cubed, y cubed. All over or underneath the cube root of 6xy squared. And I think you can see the denominator now. Cube root of all that stuff just becomes 6y all over the cube root of 6y squared. Now, now that problem has been completely or um, has been reduced or rationalized. The last problem that you see up here 10y all over the fifth root of 4x cubed y. Well, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to determine what's that lowest common denominator to use. So I might use a strategy I used on that last example. I'm going to rewrite this one 4 times 4, or uh, 4 is actually 2 squared, so that's 2 to the second power, x to the third power, and y to the first power. Well, in order for this one to have the, the radical removed, all these powers have to be the power to the fifth. And that will help me determine what's that clever version of 1 that I'm going to use. So, i got to have a 2. How about 2 to the third? Because 2 squared times 2 to the third is 2 to the fifth. x squared and y to the fourth. And on top is the same thing. 2 cubed, x squared, y to the fourth. So now I can go ahead and multiply those through. Denominator times denominator. Since it's combined, it's going to be the fifth root of 2 to the 5th, x to the 5th, y to the 5th. And that's not by accident. We intentionally set up the problem by choosing the right version of 1 so that the denominator has all 5th roots in there. And the numerator, that's just 10y to the 5th root of 2 cubed, x squared, y, y to the 4th. So let's clean that up now. For my final solution, 10y, fifth root of 8, 2 to the cubed, x squared, y to the fourth, and on the bottom, 2xy.
Oh, actually, guys, I can do one more thing to this problem I didn't realize. It looks like that this y and this y cancels each other out, and this 10 and this 2 makes that a 5. So I was able to reduce that problem afterwards. So my final solution is going to be a 5 to the fifth root of all this stuff, 8x squared, y to the fourth, over, and x. Okay, so I was able to clean it up a little farther than I thought I originally was able to. It's always good to go ahead and check.